Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Those of you that follow my channel probably know that I've already done several videos on the new masking that's found in the latest version of Lightroom Classic. It's Lightroom Classic version 12. And Adobe has done a great job with this new masking. They've improved it in general, and they've added some new masks. They added a background mask and an object mask, and they've added several different portrait-related masks as well. And in my opinion, if you're sharing images online or with family and friends, the portrait masking that's found in Lightroom is fine. You don't need anything more. But on the other hand, if you have images that you want to submit to a competition or in your portfolio, or you just want to create a very large print, or maybe you just want professional quality results, then Lightroom's portrait masking isn't good enough. I recommend that you purchase one plugin. That plugin is made by On One Software and it's called Portrait AI. Portrait AI will give you those professional quality results. And in today's video, I'm going to demo how to use it. We're going to be working on this image. As you can see, this is an Adobe stock image. And all I really did in Lightroom is I cropped it. Just made it a little tighter so you could better see what Portrait AI does uh, to the image. Now we're going to send it directly into Portrait AI. I'm just going to right click right on the image, go down to Edit In, then Over and Down to On One Portrait AI 2023. Now it works as a standalone app. It will work as a plugin in Lightroom and Photoshop. If you purchase On One Photo Raw 2023, it's included in On One Photo Raw 2023, but it doesn't work as a plugin in Lightroom or Photoshop. You have to buy it independently for it to work as a plugin in Lightroom and Photoshop. Um, because it's a JPEG, I have the option to edit the original file, but I don't want to do that. And because I cropped it in Lightroom, I wanted to recognize that. So I'm going to take this first choice, edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. I'll keep these default settings right here and we'll click edit. Now you see in the top left-hand corner, there's a progress bar. Our Lightroom is creating that PSD file with those specs and it will open it up into Portrait AI. And Portrait AI is going to do a little bit of editing automatically, and I'll show you when we get there. Also, I really didn't have to crop it in Lightroom. Portrait AI has a crop tool. You can see it's over here in the top left-hand corner. I could have cropped it here, but I cropped it in Lightroom. All right, so we're here, and I mentioned it did a little bit of processing already. Specifically, see where it says right here, Portrait AI? There's this little like button. You can turn everything off. There's before. And there's after. Can you see the difference? There's before and there's after. So it did a little bit of editing. editing. And this part right here where it says skin, this is where the skin we're touching. There's a single slider. It's kind of like the volume control or, you know, the, the amount slider. And I could turn that off. So there's before, there's after. There's that little bit of processing. You could make a very soft so your skin looks way softer now. There's before and there's after or less. But if you roll it open right here where it says details, you have a lot of control over specifically what the skin section edits. Uh, for example, blemishes. You can see right here, there's a tiny little blemish uh, under her lip right there. If I take this blemishes slider and I move it to the extreme right, what it will do is it just pulls out some of the color. You can see it's, it's more subtle. There's before. You look at that little blemish, all right? And there's after. You can see it just pulls out some of the color. If you want to try to bring some detail back into her pores, basically, you can move this detail slider to the right. These are all very subtle, I should add. Now, smoothing, this is the little more like abrupt, I guess you would say. And texture, that was maxed out as it was. And the shine, she has some shine here and there. And this is more subtle. So there's like before and there's after. So that's a little, little more subtle. And I'm going to um, probably purposely um, over process this a bit, just so you could see what you can do here. Uh, everyone processes their portraits a little bit differently. Personally, I barely process a portrait, meaning I don't do a lot to it. So if I do these videos and do it my way, you wouldn't see the full power of the application. So I'm going to do it more than I normally would. So I think the skin is okay here. I kind of just moving these sliders around. You can fold this back up when you're done if you want. 
Then you have faces. We'll turn this off. Or after not much there, you have a brightness so you can brighten someone's face. That I usually like to do. Uh, you could slim faces if you want to. I never do that. Left eye and right eye size. This I actually do. And actually, if you ever took a professional portrait editing course where they're teaching you how to use Photoshop, almost all the professional editors enlarge people's eyes 10%. Usually that's the number and the tool you would use in Photoshop is a percentage and you would put 10%. Just makes them slightly larger. I usually don't, but where I will use it is sometimes, depending on what focal length can't, lens you're using or the angle of their face, or sometimes people just are born this way. One eye is a little larger than the other eye. So usually what I'll do is I'll go to the smaller eye and I'll make it just a little bigger so it better matches the bigger eye. Now you can see on the model here, her left eye is a little bit bigger than her right eye. Now that could be just, that's the way she is, or it could be the way the camera angle is and the focal length of the lens and it's just kind of an effect, a uh, distortion uh, introduced by the lens which is more often the case. So I'm going to make her right eye a little bigger. One thing to note is when it says left eye size and right eye size, that's not from her point of view, that's from your point of view. So this to the photographer is the left eye, that is the right eye. So we'll go to this and we'll see. See, she can just make it a little bigger. I'll just do it just a little bigger, make it match the other eye a little more. Something like that. That's all. Then we have here... These, the eyes themselves, just the overall brightness of the eye. You can see how you could affect that. The whites of the eye. See, that's just affecting the white part of her eye. Detail, this is really make her look like she has marbles. Bring that detail, detail out. Here's dark circles. This works great. See, she has some dark circles under there. You can just brighten that up. What I recommend is don't go too far because then it just looks like there's too much makeup or something. Uh, so just bring it a little bit. Just lighten them up a little bit. Brow enhance. This just makes the eyebrows darker. That's all that. So I'll come in here and try to better adjust this. Dark circles. If you want to see a before after over here in the bottom, you see this preview, just click on that. There's before. And there's after. So we're, we're coming along. Now we have the mouth area. We have teeth whitening. We could just move that to the right and whiten her teeth. Right? Make her look like an anchor on the, you know, 6 o'clock news. Lip vibrance. And this defect her lips here. And this lip hue, so you could give her a different color lipstick if you so choose. And really, that's all there is to it. Now, there are some more tools over here on the left-hand side. I did mention that there is that crop tool. We don't have to crop this because I already did. But this little blemish here that I took the color out of a little bit when I was up here in details and blemishes, I moved it all the way to the right, but you could still see it a little bit. What you could do is go to this tool right here, the retouch tool. And the retouch tool has a number of different tools. I would go to this right here, the perfect eraser. And with the perfect eraser, what you could do is just paint over a blemish and then come off the image and give it a second or so and then it just totally removes it just like that you could use this if you wanted to soften lines or anything like that but i don't need to let's say this tiny little mole here let's just use it on that for demonstration purposes and come off it and there you go so that's it so go back to the view tool and we'll give another before after there's before and there's after there's before and there's after. When you're done, click done. And it will put those edits to that file and return you to Lightroom. And it may text, take a second for Lightroom to read the metadata to update. And sometimes what I found with Lightroom, just click off the thing, thumbnail onto a different thumbnail and click back on it. And here, sometimes you'll get this. Let me show you this. Sometimes this happens with plugins with Lightroom, not just uh, portrait AI, but any plugins. You see how it's just not seeing the edits? See right here though, we have these three lines in this up arrow. That's indicating that 
there is a metadata conflict, meaning Lightroom has metadata for this image, but there's some other metadata that the image has, and Lightroom doesn't know which metadata is the valid me metadata. All you need to do is click on that. You'll get this box with three choices, overwrite settings, import settings from disk, or cancel. The correct metadata is the metadata from on one's portrait AI, and that was written to the file. The file is on the disk, so you want to import settings from disk. So click on that, and then you can see there is our edited image. There's before. It take Lightroom is very confused sometimes. There's before. There we go. And there's after. There's before. And there's after. So that's on one's portrait AI. Um, it is, if you're doing portraiture, it is the one plugin I do recommend you get. It just works great. It's reasonably priced. And you can see you can do a lot with it. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. Really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.